we have reached the beautiful monastery at Demetoft. Yeah, it is called the monastery. It is still a beautiful castle, I will say that. And the first time we hear about the Demetoft is back in the 1300s. Yeah. But we can go even further back than that, because it is also mentioned in some Viking history. But the true history starts at around 1300. And until the year 1349, we don't know from which year, it was owned by Johannes Offersen. He was a strong opponent to Erik Menved, the Danish king. Besides that, Johann Offersen was in the family of Mark St. Andersen. Mark St. Andersen is best known to, for his involvement in the murder at Finnerobladet. Yeah, a famous Danish murder of a Danish king. And Johannes Opsen was well, an influential man. He owned several estates, both in Denmark and in the, the lowest part of Sweden, known as Skåne. And after the death of Johannes Offersen, the estates were split up and Vemetoft went to his daughter's husband, Jens Lauritsen. After Johann Lauritsen's death, it was inherited by his son-in-law, Jens Andersen Bock. It started 200 years of the Bock family being the owners of this estate which is quite remarkable at the time. But Jens Andersen Bock were a big supporter of Valdemar Atterdale, another of the famous Danish kings, and later Margaret I. So it's a family-owned estate that has been at the center of power by this time for around three to 400 years. And then the turmoil starts. Throughout the years, the castle has went from owner to owner. It has been inherited, it has been bought, it has been forth and back. And I will go much more in depth with all of that over on my substack. It is uh, linked in the description. But know this, that this castle has been at the center of influence and at the center of power for many years. And we pick up the story again in the 1730s, where Sophie Hedvig, she took over the daily chores of the castle. She took over well, running the castle. And she actually managed to pay off the debt on the castle. It has ramped up a lot of debt, but she managed to pay it off. She was a religious woman, a righteous woman, a noble woman. And in the testament, she said that Bremsoft should be a virgin monastery. It's, it's a monastery for women. But not every woman could get in there. It was aristocratic women who had no family, who was not married, who didn't have kids. So, yeah, virgin monastery. And by the 13th of March, 1735, Christian VI approved the monastery. The daily dealings of the castle should be run by two curators of appointed by the king and the daily head of the monastery, a woman with tremendous power. Where this woman should lead the inner workings of the castle, the two curators should lead the outer. But how does that end up with a modern well, company as it is today? Well, let's find out. At the start, the economy of the castle was bad, to say the least. But over time, it got better and they start working the farm, they start working the entire estate. Which meant that, well, today it's a modern, flourishing company. It has taken from 1700 until today to reach that point. It has big forest concessions, it has big farms, and it even functions as a monastery or more of a convent today, where it rent out apartments in the castle for women men, even married couples. So not as much an aristocratic castle today as it is, well, an apartment building. I give you that. It is one of the most beautiful apartment buildings. And if you're ever in the area, I urge you to come out to the gardens, see the gardens, because it is the gardens that makes it the entire trip out here. You can only walk the gardens out here, but, or you can walk the forest also, but, <laughs> You cannot get into the castle itself, which is understandable when you think about it. Private people are living in there. So yeah, it's a beautiful castle and it is definitely worth a stop. It is a bit romantic when you look at it. So if you have a girlfriend along, walk out here on a shiny, sunny day. Today, I'm afraid it's going to rain all the time, but 
apparently the sun is out right now and every other second it starts to rain so yeah it has taken me a bit of time to record this but it is a beautiful castle and uh, let's head on to the next castle which we'll find right there and i look forward to seeing you over there